Looking forward to this conversation and, you know, great time to be having it, considering that the FOMC, the policy decision tomorrow, the two-day meeting concludes, and it's thought that lots of language could come out around a possible uh, rate cut. And if we go into the Bloomberg and we use the WERP function or the World Interest Rate Probability function, we're going to see that the probability is toward July, right there in that orange line, an 81 or 2% yep. probability that we could see a rate cut then. What do you think about this? Well, I think right now, when you see this, I always get nervous when I see an intense consensus on one side or the other, because it, it, it gets hard to beat that. Like, what, where do you go from, you know, where do you go from there? So the Fed's basically boxed in such a way that, that to keep the market happy, they're going to have to say something that's going to keep that probability, let's say, 80 percent or higher. Other than that, I think you, you're, you could be setting yourself up for disappointment. It's really, it's really a very crucial meeting in that regard. Well, is the Fed's job, though, to keep the market happy? I know we have the S&P 500 higher, certainly today and this year on the Powell pause and today on the ECB, but they really have their dual mandate that has nothing to do with the markets. Zero to do with the markets. And I think that that's become a problem, is I think the market has gotten so enamored with the Fed put, um, as it were, that you know, I think it's sometimes people people have gotten in the mindset. Well, if the Fed's going to give me a put, why do I have to go out and buy one myself? Mm. But I, but that's really not part of the Fed mandate. On top of it, you know, as of today specifically, you've got the president really intervening in the in the independence of the Fed, and and I think the timing of a lot of this news is somewhat auspicious with him kicking off his campaign this evening. Um, but ulterior motives aside, the Fed is not about the market. But I think the Fed. After after the events of, of last of, you know fourth quarter last year, they keep it in the back of their mind somewhere. Okay, so talking about the ten year yield because that of course is probably a little bit more what should be on their mind yeah. if they were targeting uh, markets. And you know we've seen this huge move lower uh, over the last year, or so actually the last nine months by about uh, 100 basis points, even more. Is there a chance that a cut is actually priced in at this point because if you go back and you look at various moves of QE not that that is what this is uh, you know talking into the actual move you would see yields move lower and then bonds would sell off on the actual news I, I think in general you you know you've mentioned the, the effectively the buy the rumor sell the news trade and yes. I do think that that a whole range of asset classes are setting themselves up for that and that's why I think the the Fed is really the markets have boxed the Fed in here in terms of in terms of what they're hoping for um, and whether you see that in the 10 year whether you see that in equity markets there's you know basically you've got a tightrope here because the 10 year is telling you that we're going to have you know inflation you know basically quiescent for for a long period of time the fed's going to be accommodative the economy's not going to be too strong on the flip side today you had the introduction of maybe the trades maybe the trades back maybe we're going to get rid of the tariff problem which will help the economy so many moving parts 